so now that we have some systems in place and we got things in order, it's now to start showing y'all some things that y'all been asking for a kitchen garden tour. Since moving here, a lot of people have joined our channel and we really wanted to give an opportunity to introduce ourselves. Now, my name is Sydney with an I. And I'm Tori with a Y. And we are the, the Naked, Naked Gardeners. Gardeners. Prior to being here, our channel started off as an urban backyard gardening channel out in the Dallas County area. And a year ago, we graduated from that onto our homestead. Now we're a first generation homesteader that moved out into this six and a half acres farm. We're trying to inspire others as we become more self-sufficient and promote regenerative agriculture principles. And we're gonna show you some fun DIY. And show you how to grow your own food, but most importantly, share the mistakes to probably, maybe, hopefully save you from some. Right now we have a city house cat, some egg laying chickens, some ducks, and we're raising different types of meat birds to try to figure out what is best for us to raise. We're empty nesters slash city slickers that's trying to survive and continue to learn out in this country life. We're gonna start off on our first row and this one is basically our lettuce row that we started off with during the early spring. Uh, we interplanted a lot of our okra plants and we direct sow those. As you can see, a lot of the okras did not uh, germinate. And that is one of the main reasons why I like to start the seeds indoors uh, because we know once we transplant them out into the garden, that we know we will have a good successful plant from there. So the missus packs my lunch and I love eating salads. I've uh, been eating salads since I can remember from high school. And instead of always purchasing either salads mixes and different things from the grocery store, now we're able to grow it. And so it's great now that we can start harvesting some of this lettuce before it goes to seed and pack it for our lunch. Before we had put this lettuce, we had some um, spinach that kind of overwintered and it started not looking too fair. So all I did was just chop it off and just allow the root to stay in the soil so that way it can feed off all the other microorganisms that's in the soil. Here are some of the collards that uh, didn't make it through the frost that we had back in February, but it eventually started to grow. Then we got this little heat wave. And so they went, they bolted, went to flower. Now they're going to seed. And oh, that is nice right there. We got a pollinator right there that's feeding. So this is one of the reasons why we let this uh, plant go to flower to help feed the pollinators. And uh, we wanna be more self-sufficient, like we said. And so we're gonna harvest these seeds so that way in the fall time, we don't have to rely on seed companies. We can just plant these seeds directly into the ground. This is our second row. And we have right here is our bush variety of green beans. And I had planted all throughout here. And as you can see, we're missing some spots, which is another reason why I like to start the plants indoors, but it still would do pretty decent. Next month, I'll do a, a succession planting of these. So that way when these die out, the other ones will come back and we'll be able to still continue with our harvests of some green beans. This row is basically considered our determinate tomato plants and we have romas in here. Now there was a, a design feature that I wanted to do when I planted all of these crops. Surrounding the main crop, uh, I have either a flowering plant like this calendula or I will have a, a herb like either some type of uh, like rosemary or onion or something of that nature. One is they're going to help attract the pollinators while hopefully deter the pests or uh, rodents from coming around and eating our main crop. But the calendula is kind of like a sacrificial lamb for the aphids also. Correct. And all of most of all of these plants that we try to do in our kitchen garden will be a perennial plant. Calendula isn't a perennial plant. However, it's a self-seeding annual plant. And what the missus has been doing is been taking some of these flower heads after they spent their blossom and just put them directly back into the ground. And what they'll do is the following season or maybe even later on during the end of this year, will reflower and start to germinate and grow more calendulas. This is our third row, which is our sweet pepper row. And normally our sweet peppers are doing a lot better than our hot peppers. For some reason, this year they're not doing too well. 
uh, right here was supposed to be a Black Eyed Susan flower, but they look like bachelor buttons. The seed packet, to be fair, was a Black Eyed, because I'm the one that planted them, and that, I never grabbed a bachelor button. Yeah, because we grew it at an old place, and they were okay, but we always wanted to grow some Black Eyed Susans, and we thought we had it because it was on the package, but these look like... Uh, bachelor button so we're just going to continue to have them here once again you will have your flowers and your onions in between the main crop to keep the pests from coming and eating our main crop and encouraging the pollinators to help pollinate our main crop here is a parsley that survived the uh, winter frost and it's about to go to seed so we're going to allow it to go to seed so once again we're going to try to allow one plant hopefully to go to seed and we're going to harvest those seeds so that way the following season when it's time to plant them it'll be from our own stash and not from a seed store not saying that the seed store is bad but we like to not to be reliant on other people this is our first time growing a white borage and it is grown massive. We got four plants in here. It looks like it's shadowing out the peppers uh -huh. here. So what we're gonna do to alleviate that is we're gonna take three of these and transplant them somewhere else on the property. This is our first successful year of growing onions. Normally we grow a bunch of onions, but I was watching a video from Lady Cheryl and she was suggesting that we just uh, for the onions to get a nice size bulb is to mush around, push down the soil around the bulb. That way the bulb of the onion will be able to expand. And look at these, these are doing fantastic. Here in our fourth row is our indeterminate tomatoes. Now with indeterminate tomatoes, they can grow anywhere from eight foot up to 12 foot in length. On here, we have different varieties of indeterminate tomatoes. And at the beginning of the bed, we have some garden sage and some more borage, but this one is the regular kind of borage. Sage is of the mint family. So normally I won't uh, have it in the bed because they will spread, but for this uh, reason, I'm just gonna try it out to see how well it does spread or not. And it's a perennial plant, so it will continue to grow and die back during the fall. For indeterminate tomatoes, you don't wanna use these type of trellises because they will just flop over it. I got a way to show you how we're gonna get that. In the meantime, we got some German pink. Here we got some brandy wine. Here we got what mostly people use is the Cherokee purple. And this one is Jess's uh, from Roots and Rest. Your favorite one is the Dr. Witchy, which nobody ever knows how to pronounce it. Dr. Witchy, Dr. Witchy's. Mrs. Naked Gardener, she's a coffee snob. I'm more of a tea drinker. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to grow the chamomile. And as you can see that with the chamomile, they've been popping off pretty good. And the Mrs. has some that she has uh, put in the bag that we can use for teas. But for right now, what she's been doing is you just been topping off these heads and putting them back into the ground as well, right? Yeah, I would like them to just come back voluntarily. So once again, these are annual plants. However, if you put the heads off once they dry off, and uh, during the next season, once the, temp the temperature of the soil is right and the ambient uh, temperature is at the perfect temperature for these to germinate, they will come back again. This is the longest that we had lavender to stay alive. We would like to try to either infuse it into some type of oil or make some type of essential oil or even use it as a soap, put it as a uh, uh, scent for some soap. So uh, I'm glad this is able to keep on going and it's gonna help with the pollinators. So this is our fifth row, which we consider the hot and spicy pepper row. Now, all of these peppers are jalapenos and we have to start taking some of the flowers off of these plants because we wanna make sure they get a certain height before they start producing any type of fruit. Now, the reason why we're gonna be focusing on making sure they don't flower is because we want the plant to concentrate all its energy in its root and establish a great root system and a stem system. This is our sixth and original no-till bed. 
And here, we're, it's amazing how we have the zinnias here. They were looking not too great when we first transplanted them into this bed, uh, but after it got to a, about a six inch height, we kind of pinched them off and now they're getting a lot bushier and I added worm casting and now their stem and everything looks a lot healthier. Up on the trellis, we have some market more slicer cucumbers and they've been budding and just growing like crazy. And you love those because you just like to eat them just straight up. Yeah, I'll, I'll get me some hummus or some some ranch, whatever like that. And that'd be my like midnight snack or whatever it may be. Once again, we had some black eye Susan that we, we thought was a black eye Susan. I think they're either asters or bachelor buttons. I'm not sure. About towards the end of last year, we added these in-ground worm bins and they have been a great help for our last uh, place where we were at uh, with fertilizers. And it's great because even just, it's just us two, uh, we don't have a lot of food waste, so we're able to either put our food waste into these buckets, which is going to attract other beneficial microorganisms like worms and whatnot, and along with our vermicomposting bin. When we see a plant that needs an extra boost, it's great that we're able to get inside these buckets and put some uh, fertilizer of the castings around the plant. At our calendula right here, we've noticed there is some aphids on here. And when it comes to soft body insects, uh, we normally use a cold press neem oil because it has a active ingredient of azavaractin, which is helps deter and kills off any soft body insects. However, we had a company reach out to us wanting to try their hobo oil in it. And this is a perfect example of when we should try this out. Now, when you're using any type of oil, uh, first of all, since it's an oil, you want to use it either later on in the evening and you want to make sure you have a surfactant with it will help spread out that oil. We'll put about a tablespoon in here along with a tablespoon of a surfactant. Uh, we mix it up and with this being a flower, we normally wouldn't even uh, worry about that, but we want to try this out. So we're just going to spray here and we're going to let it sit for about 48 hours. And if we see some results, we'll spray from seven to 10 days and just whenever it's needed. If it rains, we will spray again, definitely. Uh, but it's, all you do is just spray, and there's definitely one, like I said, spray in the evening time, especially when you're doing with flowers because you don't want to harm any other beneficial pollinators. So we're just going to spray, make sure we cover all of these aphids. It also will sunburn the plants. Yes, that's why with the oil, you definitely want to use it in the evening time. And when you're doing these organic pesticides, you want to spray it, uh, like I said, seven to 10 days. This is our first year being successful with growing uh, coneflower or echinacea. And we're already getting some buds off of here. Once again, these are great perennial plants for in our area. They are great for medicinal plants and you can use them as containers. Mrs. Naked Gardener loves these original borage and they have some great benefits to these. Uh, it fights with inflammation if you have uh, with asthma, helps with your lungs, and it's great just eating them off of the plant itself, especially with the leaves when they're younger, because if you wait till they get older, they have a little bit of uh, spike to it, but it has a cucumber taste to it. It's a sweet cucumber taste. Mm -hmm. It's great for like salads or sandwiches, wherever it may be, or you could just while you're doing a garden tour in the garden. Mrs. Naked Gardener always wanted to square off this area. So we added this uh, no tool raised bed area where we basically have some stone here with some two by sixes. And she planted some corns and some watermelons and some ginger in here. And it's just interesting to see how the corn is already thriving. We did very well with corn last year. We didn't get a good uh, ear of corn, but uh, we did get a good harvest. And uh, since having chickens, if our corn wind up not being as good, it's always good to that we can feed it to either our, our chickens, our ducks, or just put it in our compost bin. Mrs. Naked Gardener loves to grow calendula because it's a great beneficial plant. Uh, it helps fight with infections. It's great with different types of skincare. And you made a, a salve to help fight razor bumps uh, not too long ago, right? It just comforts razor bumps. Yeah, so 
uh, we're definitely going to be growing this as she loves to grow this, just like I love to grow my zinnias. Here we have our first set of no-tool raised beds. Here we have grown our, our hard neck garlic uh, about around the fall time, October, November time frame, and they're starting to have scapes on them. The scape has a nice potent flavor of garlic that we like to keep we'll chop it off that so that way it'll put that energy back into the bulb of the plant this container right here was from our mig grow off and this was the wasabi radishes that we didn't get to harvest however it went to flower and now going to seeds and we're going to be harvesting some of those seeds so that way come this fall again we're going to be able to plant a lot more of these and our uh, walking stick kale is doing very well in here. I kind of want to transplant this to somewhere else, but I don't have any location right now to put them at. Here is our onion bed. We got a mixture of white onions, some sweet onions, some shallots, and some red onions, and some other different types of bulbs here. And they're going to be, hopefully by the end of next month, we'll be able to start harvesting some of those. Here we have our tomatoes that we didn't have enough place to transplant them. However, we are doing some experiments. These indeterminate tomatoes, we're going to be doing a fertilizer test. We got a mixture of different type of fertilizers and we're going to see which fertilizer is truly a good fertilizer or if, if all the fertilizers basically just say we're a good fertilizer for this one. So we're going to be doing some bone mills, some, some feather mill, uh, some worm casting, compost, different types of fertilizers and doing a equal amount and seeing how they can compare from that. These tomatoes, we're going to also do a prune or not to prune tomatoes. So we're going to see if you get a good yield from pruning your tomato plants or just letting them grow out. And at the end of the season, we'll compare and calculate the sum of those. This is a yarrow uh, flower. Uh, it's a great medicinal plant that Mrs. Uh, Nick Gardner grew last year and it came back again. Uh, do you, I kind of put her on the spot. Do you know what you use this for? Um, there's a lot of medicinal properties. I've done a video on tincture and talked about it quite a bit. We'll put that up in the card above there if you're watching on YouTube. We have different trellises and different portions of the garden. Uh, right here we have our pickling uh, cucumbers and they've been putting off a lot of small fruit. We can't wait for those to get a little bit bigger so we can start pickling, canning them and just as for me, like to eat on them while I'm out here in the garden. Here we have the Mrs. Nick Gardner's favorite squash plant. And it's a great uh, winter squash plant that you can use if you have uh, squash vine borers or squash bugs is uh, harming your squashes. This is the Zucchino Repicante. Uh, we have one that we kept from uh, last year that we harvest. And it's great about these because when they're small, you can harvest them and eat them like they're a small yellow squash plant. They're just a little sweeter. Yeah. Or you can wait till they get bigger and they're almost like uh, you could use them as a butternut squash type of dish. So, and as they store, they actually look almost like art. Yeah. So, I mean, these... Uh, this is a staple that Mrs. Naked Gardener always wants me to start seeds for her on. On this trellis, I had a label out for them, but I guess the wind or something knocked it off. We either think it's going to be a butternut squash or it's going to be a spaghetti squash. Uh, Mrs. Naked Gardener will put some watermelon plants from some other uh, starts that we had extras of in between them because we direct sowed these and only, well, three had came up but only two actually surviving right now and actually thriving very well. It's gonna be the mystery trellis this year. Yeah, this trellis I had direct sold some lima beans and only one came up. So Mrs. Nick Gardner decided to put some melons and some watermelons uh, on the remaining ones that she had on our no-tool garden beds here. I went ahead and just direct sowed some extra seeds I had left over that okay. I had already soaked in some water. Here we have our hunting, hummingbird mint and uh, we grew this two years ago and it just keeps on coming back and back each year. You can use this as a tea 
It's supposed to help calm you down, I believe. This is another plant that we brought over from our last urban gardening area. And it's about three years old. Yeah, this is a variety of hyssop, which is another mint variety. So you definitely want to put this in the container plant. You can put it in, in as a tea if you want to. Smells great. Bees love it. Yeah, we had bees just hovering this last year when we had it in this particular area. And that's why we just kept it here for this new squash that we're trying out. It's called a caca, I believe, how you say it. It's almost kind of like a small pumpkin, I would say, and it just been vining great. We got a fruit uh, already off of one of these, so we're dying to see how that's gonna taste. And we really just grew it because of what we heard about the seeds, how yes. the seeds taste. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a, I like pistachios and pumpkin seeds. It's supposed to be similar to a pumpkin seed. It'd be great to grow our own pumpkin seeds. We're actually gonna be starting some pumpkins for the month of June out and maybe in this area or in our pasture area. I really like top soy greens, so I decided to give these Chemsemni greens a try since they do grow pretty well in the heat here. These trees were gonna be out in our permaculture orchard. However, we've been having a heavy rainfall this year so far, and we have to kind of rethink how we're going to do our orchard now that we have a definitely low spot that keeping our areas flooded. Uh, this tree right here is the Mrs. Fuju persimmons tree. This is her avocado tree. There's already a little baby avocado. Yeah, this one had a lot of sprouts of avocado. I got rid of all of them except for one uh, just to see how it was gonna do. I didn't wanna put too much stress on the plant. I uh, will, now that we have to rethink how our permaculture orchard is, we're gonna have to up pot these plants into some bigger containers until we get that issue resolved. That's a reason why I kind of uh, took a lot of the fruits off basically all of these trees if they bared any fruit or show any signs of fruit. We have here a gala apple tree. We got some red currants and some black currants, a lot of peach trees and some, yep, peach trees. Bella Peach, Bella Peach. This one is a some plum trees, Santa Rosa plum trees, and another peach tree standard. So later towards the end of the year, once these trees start to go back into dormancy, we'll be able to up pot these into some bigger containers. And then hopefully we'll have a start the process of redoing our pasture to make it somewhat level so that way we can start doing these trees. This is where we are with our garden right now. A lot further along than where we were at last year around this time. We're interested in learning what you're harvesting right now in your gardens. Comment down below and let us know. Now we're excited about the growing season finally upon us and we're gonna be doing a lot more of these garden videos. If you wanna see how we transform this area into what it is now, we'll put that video onto the side and also in the description below.